Hello everyone and welcome back to Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and today we are talking about a beginner guide to board game categories. Categories can help us gain a really quick understanding of what this game might be all about before we learn more about it, including the audience, length of time, and mechanics and play style. So in this video, I'm defining categories as descriptive buckets of words that we use to describe games and figure out if that game is for us. And games can have multiple categories and there can be some overlap or gray area in these categories. They kind of give us a general view of what the game is gonna be about, if it might be a game that we'll like or someone we know will like to play. With that in mind, this guide is based on my personal opinion, playing and my experience playing hundreds of games, being a part of the creation of some games. I'm looking at a lot of mechanics and play style informing these different categorizations of the games. So let's get into the categories. First up under play style, we have the competitiveness of the game. How competitive is it? So a lot of games are competitive, which means each player is playing against the other, trying to get the highest score or obtain a certain goal first. On the other end of the spectrum, we have cooperative games. And this is games where players are all working together to achieve a certain goal. They're playing either against some sort of fictional enemy or the game itself, or against time, a clock. In addition, we have some variations in between the, those. A solo game would be a game just for one player. Can sometimes also be played cooperatively or co cooperative games can also be played solo. On the other side in competitive games, we have some that are gonna be one versus many. So there's a cooperative element in that many players are playing against that single player who may have some extra abilities or extra powers in order to balance the competition. In addition, there could be a traitor element to that game where in the beginning, everyone is playing cooperatively, but we don't know who that one or two or few are going to be that are going to be on the opposite side of your competition. Another way to categorize games is the components or what you physically get in your game box. So one type would be card games where cards are the only element or the main element in the game box. Another way, one is board games in which usually based on the namesake, there's usually a big board everyone is playing around. However, that has grown to include other types of mini boards or tile laying uh, mechanics that create the board or even sometimes no board at all and might be called a tabletop game as well. And then we have what we call hybrid games. These games use both physical and technology elements, whether on an app or your computer or tablet to play the game. Another way people like to categorize games is kind of based on the weight of the game. And by this, we mean lighter games versus heavier games. And there may be some gray area in this one, especially. Lighter games are generally shorter, maybe faster to learn, faster to play, and could take a little less strategy or thought or be more social in nature and that it's just easy to gather around and play that sort of game quickly. On the other side, heavy games are going to be involved just a little bit more time or dedication to learning the rules or even just time on your turn figuring out what you wanna do. Usually they'll have more strategy, maybe more choices in the game and could take a little bit longer. Another way to categorize games would be based on the audience or a group most likely to be playing the game. So first up, we have family games, which are generally gonna be a little bit on the lighter or medium weight side. They're gonna maybe have some competition or strategy, but not to an extreme level, and usually gonna be somewhat easier to learn and explain to others. Another category under this type would be party games, which are generally going to be very lightweight very easy to learn and explain to others, and they may have a social component to the game as well. And finally, the biggest group in this category I would term strategy games. 
So these are games that usually have a little bit more depth. They could be, they could still be somewhat light, but they could also be more medium or heavy. The most extreme of these heavy games are going to have a lot of more thought into the strategy, take more time, more complexity. And in the perfect information game, where all of the information is known to everyone, there's going to be a lot more thought process involved in getting that one perfect choice and taking that action during your turn. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about what Board Game Geek, that is a board game website online, terms as genres. And these are their sort of overarching categories of games based on sort of categorizing different mechanics. I'm not going to talk a lot about mechanics because I want to do that in another video and there are so many to talk about, but the board game geek genres are generally the abstract game. So these are games that tradition, a lot of them are based on more traditional or ancient kind of strategy games. These are games like Checkers and Blockus, which have little or no theme. Next we have social games, which include deduction games, trader style games, more social games or wordplay games. So games like Ultimate Werewolf and Codenames. Next they have economic games, which are going to re rely heavily on resources and action management. So this includes area control games, worker placement games, and engine building. So games like Everdell. Next we have adventure games, which are really heavy in the theme. This includes RPGs, battle style games, and uh, dungeon crawler type games, including Descent. Finally, we have traditional games which have some roots in historical games, including trick-taking games, set collection games, and memory games. So those categories or genres were based mostly on the mechanics of the game. That is the main mechanism with which you're playing the game. And those, there's so many of them, they're still very broad categories that we talked about. I may go into more detail on different board game mechanics in another video. If you would like to see that, please, let me know in the comments below. On the game design side, or if you want to get into the game design side, mm -hmm. knowing how to categorize your game is going to help so much. It's going to help when pitching your game to publishers. It's going to help when sharing your game with playtesters. It's going to help when demoing your game and trying to sell your game and trying to build a community around your game. Those categories are going to be a shortcut for people to understand is Am I interested in this, learning more about this game? Is this game possibly for me or for someone I know? And that's going to help them a lot just in getting intrigued with your game. And maybe some of these categories are an unexpected fit. And that could be really intriguing to people who, who understand and know how to use these categories. It's also going to help just when uh, deciding how to uh, sell your game in retail, knowing instead of comparing directly your game to another game that's out there, using the categories will help people get their mind working and thinking in that direction. All right, we talked about a lot of different ways to categorize games very briefly. I just want to reiterate that there is still a lot of gray area in how these categories work, and it's not necessarily the definitive guide out there. This is just from my experience, what I've seen, and what could help you maybe understand what kind of games are for you or not for you. And there are still a lot uh, you know, of changes coming to these. I don't think there even was hybrid games a few years ago, and now we've got Chronicles of Crime doing some amazing things, integrating technology into the board games where you need both elements. It's not just one or the other. In addition, Wingspan, which just won a bunch of awards th through the Golden Geek Awards. Some of these categories that they won in even seem somewhat contradictory, like the solo game category and the family game category, or the card game category and the strategy game category. But hey, maybe it's just a good game and good games can kind of supersede these categories or create totally new ones pretty soon. I don't know, I'm interested to see where it goes, where the creative and innovative minds of board game designers and publishers goes next, and I can't wait to maybe update this video later. Well, if you found this video helpful, and I hope you did, please give a like, that really helps a lot. 
leave a comment below of uh, if you're interested in that mechanics video as well and subscribe to our Patreon because that's where we're going to be putting up some polls about the next video topics where you can join our unfiltered gamer community and really it's a really great tight-knit kind of group of just people who love to play board games and just want to talk about and share that love with each other so it's really excited I love being part of that and of course always subscribe to the channel and get hit that bell notification you'll get notified when we put up new videos we're doing Callie's Corner videos about once a week uh, if you give me more love maybe I'll be more encouraged to do more videos <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer I look forward to See you guys next time.